H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So I just start off with a brief introduction on what ETL is all about. Then we'll see what we'll be covering in this advanced ETL course, and I'll take up questions thereafter. So to answer a question which just popped up, that what will be the duration of this uh, session? So it will be close to 20 hour course, where we'll be doing extensive hands-on on how can we become project ready in ETL projects. Okay, so. To come to that topic, we need to first discuss what exactly is ETL, okay, and where does it fit in the entire data warehousing setup, okay. So this is where we are. Okay, so as I said yesterday, maybe uh, I'll, I'll repeat that again. So. This exactly is what we do in a data warehouse. Okay, so you see, aim of any data warehousing project is to answer business questions so that businesses can take more informed decisions. For example, like who are the customers who are purchasing the most as compared to who are the customers who are purchasing less with a particular retailer. Okay, or a second question could be which is the most effective distribution channel okay so suppose a new product is launched through an online portal or it is launched through a physical store so which channel of sales is giving me more revenue so this can be one of the business question another business question as i told yesterday that who are the set of customers who might leave me and go to a, my competitor in the next six months okay so these are the business questions which generally business ask the data warehousing team. So what used to happen before data warehouse technology came into existence was that decisions was, would be taken based upon gut feeling. It will not be based upon num numbers. Okay. So to make sure that we take informed decisions based upon numbers, a technology termed as data warehouse came into existence. Okay. And the aim is to add greater business value. Okay. Now, how do we answer those questions? Right. So, we answer these questions with the help of reports, or we build dashboards, or we do analysis, or in specifics, we do analytics. Okay. So, your business questions will be answered with the help so with the help of reports for preparation of report what we need we need data we need historical data right so when we say data for preparation of reports or for answering business question we need to have access to historical data for example the question is okay give me the list of customers whose sales is declining so that i can predict that okay these are the customers who might not purchase with me in the next six months so how will that this question be answered? It will. It can it be answered by just one day worth of data? Can it be answered by just looking at a customer's two day worth of data? No. You need to have access to a customer's historical data so that we can study the pattern, we can study the trend, his buying pattern, his buying trend, and then we can come to a conclusion that okay, in the last six months we have seen that there is a continuous decline in his buying pattern. So I can predict that, okay, in the next three to four months, he might not purchase with us at all, right? So the point what I'm trying to specify here is that to prepare your reports and dashboards, you need historical data. You need to have access to the historical data of customers. Now, from where do you get historical data? It will be from your source systems which will be your transactional data for example you go to a shop you go to a retail store okay or you go uh, click on an e-commerce website you make a sale the entry 
as soon as you make a sale sale as soon as your invoice is generated an entry will be made into a transactional database okay which we term as oltp so oltp olap all these are technical data warehousing jargons which we will be discussing uh, when we start off so for now sources where your data where your sales data gets into for the first time okay from there it moves down to your historical databases with the help of etl tools okay so if you see to connect your data warehousing world do this so this is your data warehousing world where you have your historical data you have your reports you answer business question and this is actually data which is coming from the stores or from the transactional systems when wherever you make any transaction these are the systems which are giving you data so etl tools act as a connector between the data warehousing world and the external world right when i say this it means that it acts as a connector between your source and the target table right so that's why we say that etl tools are the heart of a data warehousing architecture or in a data warehousing project etl tools are something which are the most important aspect of a project okay so give me a moment when i go back to the previous slide this is what it means okay so you have etl tools which are the heart of your data warehousing project now this can connect to any number of sources you can have big data as your sources you can have flat files flat file means it will be just notepads or you can have a excel file or a csv file you can even connect from a cloud data thereby generating reports so these are the different cycle in which your data will be there maybe you'll connect your source could be big data for example you got a question from business that okay by looking at this facebook page tell me suppose i launched a product on facebook and by looking at the comments and likes i want to do sentiment analytics that okay this product is liked by this percentage of people like 60% of folks like the product so for that what will happen anyway facebook logs are unstructured that will be taken as a source right it will be processed by the etl tools and a report will be generated similarly if you have some numbers stored in your databases what will happen it will go through your etl tools process processing will happen and the reports will be generated if it's a very simple a uh, way of doing transformation like if you are maintaining your sources in flat files then anyway flat files can also be manipulated through etl tools and reports can be generated so here the point which is which i'm trying to specify is that you can have multiple varieties of sources but all these sources enter into the gateway of etls and the common aim is to prepare reports okay so our area of focus would be to see how we can do testing when you have different types of sources okay so oh, one second so to take care of this you need to have different tools in place right where you should be aware of different functionalities of a tool for example any one etl tool you need to know the overview of an etl tool any one database you need to know right any one report like how how are the reports prepared how can we do testing and reports you need to know right and so these are predominant ones what etl tool is something which is required a database knowledge is required like how can we write sqls what are different techniques in a particular database and how to prepare reports and then these flat files and all are anyway self explanatory big data is something which will be touching upon as a source okay so getting back to my tools so here is informatica okay informatica path center designer is a tool which helps us to as i said right to take data from different sources and 
dump it into a particular target table okay so this is just a sample mapping i've taken like uh, mapping is nothing but a uh, logical code which helps to make data flow from source to target so if i can increase the font not really now okay let it be this one so this is an informatica tool which we will be going through in detail okay so this is an etl tool then as a database we will be going through teradata teradata is a place where we will write extensive sqls and there are different utilities which make data flow from source to target that will be covered as part of a database course and then you will learn to look into a report okay so i'll see if i can show you one of report so in this one this is a business objects report which is actually given to a client it's a very simple report which i am showing now but anyway in our real projects it will be like a dashboard with too many numbers too many graphs and all but the one which i am showing now is pretty simple one so here our aim in a sessions would be to go through informatica teradata and a reporting tool preferably business objects or we'll try to get tableau in place okay so this is a report which uh, will be generated so which goes to the client so that they can see their numbers here the ask was that okay they want to know the churn ratio in their market when i say churn churn is the number of customers who will be uh, leaving me in the next 6 uh, months or a particular time period so they what they wanted that based upon different regions they wanted okay these are the set of customers or the percentage of customers who might leave us so if you see sacramento there was 1.43 percentage and then these are different percentages across different regions so this is the end result which we give to a business user a report but to prepare a report lot of effort goes in terms of mining that data okay to prepare that data using etl tools to validate that data using databases so our job as etl testers predominantly would be to validate the data before it gets fed into this report okay before we go and publish these numbers to the business we as etl testers would be required to log into a database validate the numbers are, are those numbers correct or not there will be different transformations which the business will tell us to do for example suppose here business has told that okay give me churn percentage in some other requirement business will tell that okay don't give me a percentage give me the number of customers who are who might leave me so we'll have to do certain calculations and all right so whether those calculations are correct or not who needs to validate it is the etl testers who will have to validate and all this validation and everything will go into a database so predominantly if you see a core structure it's structured around three parts so model 1 it will be like predominantly on on to what is the concepts of data warehouse okay and then how can we go ahead and prepare test cases and execute them so a high level overview on what happens in all the projects like uh, the basic phases a test case generation and test case execution and then from model 2 onwards we'll slowly go into the real life project how once we get into a project how exactly it happens in a real life project okay so we'll understand the reporting requirement so this is one such report so we'll see different scenarios or different mini projects as to what can be different reporting requirements and how to achieve those requirements right so we'll also touch through logical data model and physical data model so data models are nothing but the relationship between your tables for example it could be something like this like uh, it will be stated in a language that okay there is a sales attribute and for that sales attribute you have a sales person and the products which are to be sold so this is just a relationship if you see there is a many to many relationship between the sales person and the product means one sales person can sell multiple products and multiple products can be sold by multiple sales person so if you see these three dots it means that this is a many to many relationship so these are something which as and when we proceed will be covering so this is a part of data model okay we need to understand what is the relationship between our tables which are there in a warehouse because 
on a high level what is a data warehouse a data warehouse is where we store data right so we need to understand what what can be the relationship between your tables right so okay so yeah i am getting a couple of questions and give me a moment i'll just finish off uh, my explanation then probably i'll take it to your questions okay so this will be part of our data models okay and then we'll see what are different transformation rules and schema validation other techniques used for etl testing and then we'll go into informatica okay so informatica architecture what are the different transformations in informatica how to write how to code using informatica because see as an etl tester what we are required to do we are required to validate the work which has been done by the developers or by the other teams right so we should be able to visualize what they do right we should be able to write ourselves what we do so here we'll be learning few basic codes using informatica and what are the standard checks you need to do when you are testing an informatica code okay and then when it comes to database we'll talk about terra data terra data is nothing it's just like a database like your oracle sql server and the others so it is something which can scale up very quickly like you can store trillions of data and like it has huge storage capacity so that's why i have taken uh, terra data because oracle is something which most of us know so terra data is something which uh, we'll try to learn and we'll be covering terra data architecture the different sqls which are which we should know in terra data which we should know for data validation and advanced level sqls which are specifically termed as olap functions so terra data olap functions are something which are like advanced level sqls also we'll be covering and then we'll see how can we prepare reports or how can the reports be tested like we have seen a business objects report now right so this was one example of a business objects report so possible we'll see a tableau report also okay so how can we uh, create a dashboard how can we do report testing using tableau and then finally it's all about how to log your defects so configuration management okay so there are different envi environments if uh, you folks are aware, uh, aware of uh, about it there are different environments right you will have a development environment you will have a uh, test environment you will have a production environment so how does migration happen between all these environments right so this will be covered as part of a configuration management okay and the same is a deployment group so deployment group is nothing but how you migrate your codes across different en environments okay and then finally we'll see how can we create a test plan because a deliverable expected out of a etl tester is a test plan and a test exit report okay so how can we create a test plan and a test exit report and then finally we'll see how we can do a testing over unstructured data okay so we'll just touch upon it how to test unstructured data using couple of components in big data which is pig and hive okay and then this is a 20 hour session the main aim of our, this advanced etl course is to do extensive hands on so on all these topics which we have covered there will be extensive hands on sessions so that we can make ourselves project ready and if we keep our aim to become project ready interviews can be taken care at any point in time okay so this is what we have planned to cover as part of our advanced etl course and this is certainly there were a couple of questions which is which came in like uh, is it a part of qa testing the answer is no etl testing is a bit different from traditional legacy qa testing because of the impact of because of the amount of business impact we have here so if you see as i told our job is to make sure that the number which goes to the report is it correct or not okay imagine we gave wrong numbers and businesses took their decisions based upon these wrong numbers suppose business want to start off with a product promotion in a given region they went ahead with our numbers which are wrong and they launched a product and it adversely affected their business so this is something which is having huge impact right so just to make sure that the number which goes into the reports it's completely accurate it's completely pure they are open etl testers and to make sure that the numbers are accurate as per gartner etl testers are someone who get 
more compensation as compared to the normal traditional tester. This is something which I have seen in Gartner reports. So the amount of impact which we have on the business is a, it's a direct one. Like if you see an application tester, your application might not work, right? So a user might not be able to do a specific task, but the criticality of that impact is relatively lower as compared to the number which you give to business. The business, if they take their decisions based upon your wrong numbers, that will have a more critical impact as compared to an application which is not working as per functionality, right? So if you see the related study, the, it's the ETL testers which weigh in more, right, as compared to different report. So anyway, that is something different. But on an, in a nutshell, this is what we intend to cover as part of our advanced ETL sessions. And it will be predominantly hands-on as this is what will make ourselves project ready. Okay. So this is what I had for a brief uh, intro on the advanced sessions which are scheduled to start off next week. Uh, if you have any questions, you can please um, shoot to me now. So well, it will be covered here itself Radhika. So a course is designed that if you see the first model, uh, we will be covering the beginning basics of ETL and then slowly we'll be mo moving towards the advanced features. So it's a mix of uh, basic as well as ad advanced. So it is for beginners as well as intermediate folks. Okay. Do you need to download any tool? Yes, we'll be sharing across the link. We need to have ETL tool like Informatica or uh, Teradata to be installed. So we'll be sharing uh, these installers which are on cloud so that you can practice. Yes, we'll be sharing those. Uh, it's the same uh, repetition of the same class Priyanka which got disconnected yesterday. So it's the same thing which I'm repeating today. Timing Sunita probably will have to confirm with us today. It will be around the same time, the one which you are having today. Yeah, a on cloud version of Tableau or any other reporting tool will also be shared, Neela. Uh, Radhika, probably this is something which you need to check with H2K regarding the course fee and all. And uh, class timing, I can confirm it will be around uh, 8 or 9 p.m. EST. Yeah, initially it will be for uh, like I uh, will be taking for a couple of days in a week and then. Uh, once the installations and everything is completely complete, everybody is uh, ready to do hands-on, we'll be uh, speeding it up. Initially, because installations and all, as per our past experience, it does take a bit of time. So, we'll keep a couple of days in a week. And once everybody is good to go, we'll uh, increase the frequency, maybe thrice or four, four times in a week. Yes, we'll be starting with the basics. Otherwise, it doesn't make a point, right? So, we'll be starting with the basics the basic concepts and then we'll be moving towards the uh, like uh, hands-on using different tools. Uh, Deepthi, yes, there will be a repeat session probably tomorrow and day after maybe. Uh, Priyanka, you can certainly join this like uh, uh, even though if you don't have basic knowledge because this course is designed so that we can cover basics as well as advanced completely. So we'll start off with the basics of ETL, basics of data warehouse. Once we are good with that, then we'll launch on to the advanced section. Yes, recordings will also be sent once we start off with the normal classes, not for this intro, intro session. Uh, the duration of the session would be prob probably around 20 hours. Okay. Any further questions, guys, before we uh, wrap up this uh, quick demo? And will this class timing clash with the BA training class? Probably, I'm not sure. Like, I don't think we'll be clashing with any other class uh, sessions uh, because we plan it that you know, in such a way that uh, students that we don't clash with the different classes. But anyways, you can check this with uh, H2K Priyanka. I'm certainly sure that we will not be clashing with any other uh, class. If you have SQL knowledge, it's good. If not, we'll be covering that in this sessions for Anjan. But yes, to do ETL testing, you need to have SQL knowledge. 
so i don't think there will be a clash between them it will be on separate timing or, or on a different timing all right guys so if you don't have anything else uh, probably we can wind up uh, no we need to have see uh, like when we talk about different transformations right your transformations could be very simple or your transformations could be very complex so depending upon that you will need to have basic as well as advanced level sql knowledge so basic is enough if you just get simple transformation like converting a percentage to a number or number to a percentage or to do very simple transformation but what if you give complex transformations from business what are transformations i'll be covering that in detail so if you get complex transformations then you will have to write complex sqls to validate those right so i'll not say that only basic sql knowledge is enough for etl testing you need to have equip yourself with advanced knowledge also so that you can test any kind of data which comes your way Okay, sure. Thank you. No, you don't need to uh, learn uh, scripting for executing programs. It will be done by by a UI, but Unix uh, commands, basic commands which we need for um, ETL testing, that we will be covering. But for uh, executing your uh, jobs or programs in ETL, we don't need a Unix script. It will be done through a UI. We'll be seeing that later on. Are you also covering web services testing? No, Sikhinda, it's not part of uh, ETL testing. We're not covering web services here. Uh, yes, yesterday there was a session planned, but there were some technical issues. I just had a session for 15-20 minutes, and then uh, this go-to meeting had some issues. So it's the repetition of the same class. There's nothing additional I have taught today. um need to preferably from next week onwards we will be starting off with the sessions uh, i didn't get that many probably can you please ping in once more I think there will be one intro session plan tomorrow also. This day. no, these all models will not be covered this week. It's uh, the complete course uh, which we have shown here. It will not be for every day. Need to uh, initially. It will be once or twice in a week, and once uh, we are comfortable with the topic, probably we can increase the frequency to maybe three days or four days, depending upon a mutual convenience of all the students. But certainly, it will not be every day. so there are two types of testers here mele so like you will have a application tester who will be testing different applications different uis but etl testers are completely different if you have seen here we are predominantly concerned with generating reports so these two testers are different right but yeah there can be some intersections or some portions of the job job responsibility which might be shared across both these pro profiles but both are different etl as well as qa because th there the aim is to test whether a particular application is working properly or not and here you need to make sure that the data or the report which you present to the business that is correct or not yes so in case you so you are talking about uh, these intro sessions or the regular sessions sunita for this intro session i don't think we'll be having the no recordings but for the regular session certainly yes we'll be uh, recording the sessions and we'll be sharing the links to the recordings too yes there is a automation certainly involved in etl testing and it will be through etl tools which will be taking care of yes when you can say that it is a part of q 
you can see subset of u. Okay, fine, Priyanka. I think it's there on the website. Probably I'll mm, ask the STK folks to share that across. Vahini, uh, probably from next week, we'll be starting off. Or from next next week. Teradata SQL and Toad Point I data is same or di different tool. Okay. So Teradata is a database. Okay. Toad is an interface through which you can fire your SQL queries. Okay. So I can say that okay, using Toad you can fire Teradata uh, fire queries onto your Teradata database also. So these are two different. It's not same. Teradata SQL and Toad. Okay, so fine guys, if you don't have any further questions, then probably we'll wrap up the session and hope to see you in the regular session starting soon. Now, what was it, Deepthi? I saw a couple of question marks. What are you asking? When do we have the next session? So, uh, we'll have it tomorrow, I think which will be again an introductory session but the regular session will be starting from next week so etl if you say really like it's a vast concept as i said right if you see this thing every data processing project will have etl so it's a very huge concept and if you relate it with qa no it is completely different okay so but when you take a couple of uh, procedures from there or the way we do testing, the processes, okay, you can say that it, testing is a subset of QA, but when you see the aim of ETL projects or of ETL testing, it is completely different from what we do in a QA testing. So as and when you go into the depth, we'll, it will become more clear as to what is ETL and uh, how does it differ from QA. So it was just an introductory session where I can't cover all. So, but when we start off, like uh, it will be more clear as to what is ETL and how does it differ from traditional QAs. Yes, it will be pre-written or you can write it on your own. Like we'll start off with basic uh, programs, so you can certainly write it on your own. And anyway, we'll have pre-written Informatica programs also. But preferably, preferably, I don't prefer a pre-written programs in because there the audience doesn't get to uh, know more. Like I'll make sure that you guys write programs on your own rather than uh, just uh, running a pre-written program. So Shweta will be starting with the regular session pref probably from next week. Until then, it will be same introductory session. Okay. All right, guys. So with this, we'll wrap up the session. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon in the regular sessions. Okay. Thank you.